You know, a certain level of lawlessness is tolerated in a free society. I should say a, a certain t there's a certain level of uh, tolerance for people breaking laws. Like, are we really all that concerned about people, I don't know, smoking pot or something? Mostly no, but it can scale up to a point where we're like, yo, that's too much. Even though it was illegal for the most part and still isn't uh, federally, many people smoke pot on a regular basis. Many states have legalized recreational marijuana, even though the federal government says no. Now, I'm going to tell you about some of the lawlessness I love, but then we're really going to be talking about the danger of real lawlessness. I know the title of this video is about how crazy things have gotten. But take a look at this story. You may have seen it. Los Angeles residents defy firework, defy fireworks ban. Light up sky citywide on 4th of July. This video is absolutely incredible. It is just a flying over LA and it is a field of explosions in the sky. It's fireworks. The whole city. It's crazy. Did you see the video from Philadelphia? It is nuts. The whole city is just boom, 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 boom all over the place. Yeah, it's lawlessness. It's the right kind, though. It's people telling the government you do not have the right to restrict our freedoms. You want to go out and spot support these protests? Fine. But we're going out and we're lighting off fireworks, even though you said no. Look at this. A stunned KCAL reporter in the clip relayed that each person shooting off fireworks was subject to a potential $50,000 fine. According to LA Public Health, the ban on fireworks, which was instituted for the entire county, was ordered along with the shuttering of beaches to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Well, too bad. The American people will not sit by as your false and unconstitutional edicts are, are, are decreed. Nah, Americans understand. Look, a lot of these people are probably smoking pot while they're lighting off these fireworks, even though it's against the law, because we tolerate a little bit of this. When I talk about protests and civil disobedience, blocking a road is illegal. Yeah, you're going to get arrested but you're going to get a slap on the wrist. We get it. You want to get attention. It's a low level, nonviolent offense. It can cause problems. You know, blocking a highway can be stupid, but I'm talking about like linking arms, blocking a door. You get arrested for this stuff, but we do as a society tolerate this. It's a slap on the wrist offense. Let's talk about the real threat of lawlessness though. As these governors, as these mayors are so concerned about fireworks, what's really happening as our police are under, under fire, under threat? Well, here we go, man. July 4th bloodshed sees 41 people shot overnight in NYC, killing at least four dead, killing at least four dead. Yes, four people uh, were dead, four people shot in Chicago. A seven year old girl and a 14 year old boy are gunned down as America's violent summer continues. Crime is skyrocketing in New York City and in Chicago. Why? It's, it's, it's skyrocketing all over the place. Police are completely demoralized. Their budgets are being slashed. And what are they doing? The same thing that government always does, like most people, they take the path of least resistance. And you know what? It's sad, really. It really. And, and look, cops do this, too. You know, what's what? what, what let, let me ask you a question. Let's say you are working. Let's say you're a cop and you're driving on the road and, and, and you see, you know, oh, oh, somebody somebody made an improper lane change. Easy. You can pull them over. No problem. But then you hear, uh oh. You may be somebody who's going to call in, get called in because there's a shooting. Now, I know, I, I know I'm not really, really giving you a fair scenario. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me just put it this way. Look, if you had a choice between two incidents, pulling someone over for a traffic violation or rushing into a gunfight, which would you pick? You're at work. You know, not, not every single cop is a superhero who wants to run into, you know, violence. But you got to do your job so you'll take the path of least resistance. That's what these governments are doing. The government sees that conservatives and moderates, regular Americans will just obey the law. Now, criminals won't. And the protesters, the rioters, the extremists won't. So what do they do? They appease the rioters while scolding you because they know you will do nothing. So what do we get? Chaos and calamity in our cities, shootings, death and chaos. But it's so hard to enforce those laws. Now, issuing a citation because you set up fireworks, that's easy. And that's what the government's going to keep doing. Whatever is easier, Eventually, the people will get fed up. The 4th of July is supposed to signify the day that we realize the government is, is of, by, and for the people. Many people do not realize this, that before the 4th of July, the government was divine mandate or force. We changed all that. So if our government is now becoming destructive, because instead of actually stopping crime and extremists, 
They're trying to tell us we can't set off fireworks. You know what they're doing in Baltimore? They tore down a statue of Christopher Columbus, threw it into the harbor. Nobody stopped that. No, I get it. Nobody stopped the fireworks either. But they're telling us we can't have our public fireworks displays. That they did stop. We can't go to the beach. That they did stop. But they didn't stop people tearing down the statues and throwing them into the harbor. They're not actually protecting our communities. They are not actually serving us. They are just ignoring the problems while pretending to actually take care of things as they cater to the lunatics. And our cities burn because of it. It's just, to me, it's absolutely insane that we can actually have a month, now 38 days of riots in Portland, and they have the nerve to condemn the law-abiding citizens. And that's what you will get. And that's what you'll continue to get. Hopefully, the system we have in place works. And come election day, these people are ejected for being pathetic, spineless losers. Have you guys seen the, uh, the new campaign ad from Sean Parnell over in PA 17th District? I believe it's the Pittsburgh area. This dude probably had, he's had two campaign ads. And this guy knows what's up, if you ask me. The first campaign ad went viral where he basically talks about the do-nothing Democrats and Pelosi, and it's just a really, really fun ad. He walks around and he's showing stuff, makes fun of Biden. His latest ad, though, he went hard. He called out a lot of this stuff. The far left doing the far left stuff, you know, they're, they're tearing statues down, they're desecrating, you know, uh, Jefferson, Washington, etc. And it's a, it's, it's a rather dark video. I mean that literally, like it's, 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 it's dark, and he's sitting there, and there's music, and it's very ominous and very serious. I think it needs to be said. The media condemned Donald Trump's speech at Mount Rushmore as dark and divisive. What does that mean, divisive? Why would that be divisive? Dark? Actually, you know what? I'll say maybe. Because he, he warned us about a far left that wants to institute a culture revolution. And he's not wrong. The struggle sessions are happening. They are putting people on display to post long-winded messages about how sorry they are that they voiced a character in a cartoon show. Not kidding. We had multiple people quit cartoon shows because the cartoon characters were the wrong color or they were the wrong color to voice the cartoon character. It's happening. And people are being forced to submit to this. So Donald Trump gave a speech. They said it was dark and divisive. Well, I would say maybe it was dark. That's fair because of the warning he gave us and the threats we're facing. But divisive? It would only be divisive if you think regular Americans should compromise with the extremists who are burning down police departments, who are tearing down statues of our, of our founding fathers. Divisive? I'm sorry. We got ourselves a conundrum here. There was a period where people said Tim was a milk toast fence and all that stuff. And I still jokingly say it, but let's be real. The moment they started tearing down statues of our founding fathers, there was no compromise. I am not going to go to these extremists who are burning down buildings and say, OK, OK, here's the compromise. You burn down half the building and we're OK with that. No, there's no compromise to that. Don't burn it down. Stop these people. Arrest them. Lock them up. Any good American should recognize we can't allow these people to do this. Now, take a look at the, at, the, at, the, at the standard crime that's increasing. Any regular American should say, stop attacking our police officers. We can be critical. We can ask for reform while not condemning every single officer by saying things like a cab. But what happens? These protesters are granted impunity. They go out, they do whatever they want. And when will they face justice? Well, Donald Trump the DOJ, FPS, they've arrested people. But the cities, the states, the local governments are doing nothing to stop this. To me, it all leads to one place. It's going to lead to a point where someone must stop them. So what do we get? Trump, people like Sean Parnell. Seriously, check out Sean Parnell. He's, uh, I donated to him. I, uh, it's funny because I know as soon as I did, they're going to be like, aha, Tim, you're a Republican now. It's like I voted to way more Democrats, to be honest. I'm sorry, I donated to many Democrats. I donated to him as well because I thought his commercial was really, really great. And it's about time someone stood up to this, this absurdity. Seriously. How many Republicans have stood up and said, stop tearing this stuff down? How many? A handful? And I've given him credit. Sean's one of them. He's running. We'll see if he wins. But what we are seeing is a media that would call Trump divisive because they are on the left. They support this stuff. They are writing articles condemning 1776, all of that stuff. And you know what? I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan at all. So Donald Trump can propose his standard conservative fare, and I'm not a fan either. But when he comes out and says, I will defend our country and create a garden of heroes, more statues. I'll stand up against this crime that's wreaking havoc on our communities. I will restore the economy and bring these things back. I'm like, please just do it. Fine. So this is why I've said considerably, uh, 
I'm leaning towards voting for Trump. A lot of people want me to just come out and start wearing a MAGA hat and screaming. I'm not going to do that. We still have many months to see what happens. And Trump is going to have to ramp things up and we'll see where things go. But if it comes down to it on November and we are facing down the barrel of far left extremists running amok with no accountability, I am going to walk right up to the person who says they will grant that to me and I will say, you have my support. So we'll see where that is right now. That is Trump and people like Sean Parnell. None of these other Republicans, none of these other Democrats. We are no longer at a point where we are talking about pro-choice or progressive taxes. We're not even talking about a public option. We're talking about far left extremism or someone resisting it. It's not even good enough. The Republicans haven't even set the cycle, set the conversation. They've been reacting the entire time. So I'm not happy with them. I don't care for them either. I want someone to stand up and say, we will have law and order. You will be able to live your life. There will be a good economy. That's what I want to hear. Trump has been saying that. A lot of the standard conservative stuff I'm not a fan of. But if, all, if, the, if the opposite is Joe Biden, who's pandering to them and trying to compromise to not be divisive, now, I'm sorry, I won't compromise with these people that are tearing down these statues. If they came to me and said, well, how about we only tear down some of the statues? I'd say, no, none of them. You vote. We have a conversation. We decide who comes down and where it goes. Not you arbitrarily just throwing ropes and ripping things apart. We'll see how things play out. The lawlessness, however, for the most part, has to stop. If the lawlessness is people going out and celebrating this country with fireworks, well, that's the lawlessness that has no victims that I'm okay with. There's no permanent damage to a firework going off. Unless there's an accident, sure. But these people deliberately destroying things and killing people, it's got to stop. I got one more segment coming up for you in a few minutes. Stick around and I will see you all shortly.